Hi everyone, welcome. Three months ago I released a video uh, which was called uh, How I Run Exponology on a Microserver Gen 8 from HP. Um, back then I was running on a Windows 10 host operating system. On there I had installed VMware Workstation Pro 12 and on there I had my virtual machines uh, like the Ubuntu server and of course my Exponology build. So the problem with the setup was that Windows 10 after installing important Windows updates would automatically reboot um, didn't pay any attention to the um, running processes and services on the background, just shut down everything and rebooted itself. I did some registry tweaking and the settings in Windows, but it didn't matter what I did. So I was looking for a better solution uh, to virtualize my machines. And I was also running it as a home theater system. So um, last weekend I had planned to completely redo my Gen 8 build and uh, start from scratch. And I was looking for a solution that could also um, pass through my GPU uh, for the home theater system. So I had looked for several options and one of them was VMware ESXi, uh, but that one was really expensive. And the other option was Microsoft's Hyper-V Server 2016. And on the Microsoft website you can download an evaluation version. It doesn't say how many days it will expire, but um, if it's like the, the desktop version of Hyper-V, I think it will never expire, but we will, we will see that in the, in the future, which was this option, as you can see behind me, Hyper-V uh, Server 2016. And that is working really well so far. I've been running this for almost a week now, and it's very stable. And also the, the system load on the server itself is, is not that high. It needs about 700 MBs of, uh, of RAM. Maybe we can take a look at that. I have at the moment three virtual machines running and I will get into that in a bit. Um, the performance, uh, as you can see now, it now has 4.5 gigabytes of RAM in use from the 5.86 gigabytes I have installed in the server. Um, I am planning to upgrade the RAM, but for now I will just use 6 gigabytes. And also the CPU load is, is very low and it's very stable. And the network speeds are consistent and fast like you would expect just gigabit speeds above 100 megabytes a second when I copy things to my NAS system. The only downside of this is um, I couldn't find a working uh, Exponology 6.1 solution for Hyper-V. And as I read on the forums, it could have something to do with the kernel uh, they are using, uh, which doesn't support the Hyper-V hardware at the moment. And I believe they are working on it, so I will keep that in check. So what I have running on here is, um, of course, the Hyper-V server itself, uh, which uses uh, 700 megabytes of RAM. And so I have about five gigabytes left for my virtual machines. I don't use it as a home theater PC anymore. Um, and that's because I also couldn't get the pass-through for the GPU to work. And maybe I will look to that in the future, but for the moment, I'm just using Plex on my Exponology build and I'm streaming through my Chromecast in my apartment here. And that's working also really well. So, um, so let's have a look what is actually running on my Hyper-V installation. We go to the Hyper-V manager. And um, here you can see I have running my DNS. It, it's, it's my Exponology build. And at the moment I am running Exponology 5.2. And it's really a step back. But it does fulfill all my needs. I don't have access to some features in Exponology 6.0, but all the main functions do work, so that's the important thing. Um, so that's my first uh, VM, gave it one gig of RAM and I gave it two cores. Uh, then we have the DR ProLiant VM, uh, that's my daily driver. I use it to connect from office to, uh, to this VM. Um, I have the mail on there, all that kind of stuff. Um, I gave this one two gigs of RAM and all the four cores are accessible in this uh, VM. Then we have the third VM, and this is actually the 6.0 build I found uh, on the forum. I must say they took down the pages that were linking to the 6.0 thread. Um, but if you Google it, you will find it's a Chinese website, I believe. Um, you can translate it, of course, and that's what we did. And it is actually working, but as I said, not everything is working. And the most important thing is that the storage uh, manager doesn't work. So. Um, no point in using it. 
And then we have my DR Ubuntu server. I run my DNS server on there and also my TeamSpeak server is on there. Uh, we'll use it for a couple of other things. Dedicated servers that are compatible with Linux will run on there. Um, so in the future, this will get more RAM. When I upgrade my server with more RAM, of course, then this one will get more RAM and also access to more cores. Now it has one or two cores. Don't remember exactly, but let's have a look. There's one core now and it has 512 megabytes of RAM, which is more than enough for now. It uses, well, not even 200 megabytes. So uh, for now it's, uh, it's enough. So we now have a look at my DR ProLiant and it's yeah, right here. Let me get that to the other screen. This is my ProLiant VM. Um, as I said, this is my daily driver. Uh, it has access to all the four cores. As you can see here, um, it's running on really low resources and two gigabytes of RAM for now is more than enough. Basically, I do some office work on there. And as I said, I have my mail on there, but nothing fancy. And I gave this VM almost 100 gigabytes of storage. And my server has a 256 uh, gigabyte SSD from Transcend in there. So more than enough storage for that. And as you can see, my Plex server is here and also the DLNA uh, function of my NAS. Um, configured all that, did a clean uh, configuration of my NAS and we'll go there in a bit. First, we have a look at my DR NAS and that's this one. And I will get a screen open to this NAS. Get it on this screen, yes. Gives a couple of errors, nothing to worry about. This is also, of course, XP new boot, uh, which belongs to version 5.2. I have the latest, latest version for 5.2 installed. Yeah, nothing really to see there. Oh, let's close this one and open a web browser. And get it over here, yes. And here we have my NAS. It's of course actually my main NAS. I have 10 terabytes of storage in there, one for all my media content and the other one for raw data and the backups and all that kind of stuff. And I also have a bare metal setup, which is also running 5.2. We'll do a video on this, um, upgrading this 5.2 server to 6.1 as, uh, as it now runs very stable. So going to do a video on that will be coming up maybe next week. Uh, yeah. This is my NAS, uh, the functions, the roles I have installed on this NAS is the mail server, uh, web station, for the website of course, Plex Media server, uh, download station if I need that, um, media server, um, the standard stuff. Of course, not going to upgrade to version 6.0 as it is not usable at the time. So um, I will keep that in check. So this is my Xpenology. And then we have my Ubuntu server, of course. So yeah, go back to the Hyper-V manager, get the screen open to the server. Yeah, and that's this one. I normally don't connect it uh, like this, uh, use Putty for that. Um, running Webmin on there, I could have a window open. And let me get this window wide. Oh. Okay, I'll stay there then. Um, yeah, let's log in. Okay. And this is how I manage my Ubuntu server. And as I can see, you already have a full package updates. It makes managing your, uh, your server a little bit easier. You could also install roles from here, um, remove roles, uh, adjust the settings, the uh, network interfaces. Of course, you could also do it through the command line interface. Um, I prefer it this way. So yeah, as I said, it is running at very low resources. Uh, at the moment, it's using up 172 megabytes of RAM and it on the CPU, it has a load of 0%. Well, that's really low. Uh, as I said, run a DNS server on here and my uh, TeamSpeak server now is on there. Um, also, I will install my Feed the Beast Minecraft server on here, but that will be later on, uh, not for now. Okay, uh, that's that one. Then we have, of course, our DR Test NAS Expanology. 
build. Yeah, let's fire this one up and I will show you what I mean. As I said, it's... No, it doesn't. Um, okay. Let's power it down. Let's see if we can make some changes to get it to work again. Okay, test it again. No, I think this was a one time opportunity. Well, it wasn't working anyway, so uh, no point in, uh, in using it now. Um, the problem was it is actually, uh, it was booting and it was running version 6.0.2. But the storage manager wasn't able to um, format any drives. So yeah, if you don't have access to your storage, then a NAS is completely useless. Um, I hope they will get it fixed in a newer version. Also, I saw a news message today. Um, Synology releases uh, 6.2 beta. Would be interesting though, if that could run on it, but maybe the guys of Xpenology are getting this to work. Would be awesome to run this in, uh, in VM on Hyper-V. Would be a good mix. Um, one thing I want to show you is my management. Get it to the other screen. Yes, and here you can see it says a computer management local. And we say connect to another computer. And that will be a Hyper-V. Bam, I've com configured this already, so um, it knows my credentials. So I'm now managing my Hyper-V server, and you have access to your uh, Windows logs. So you can monitor it from another computer on your network. Quite handy. You could also manage device management if you have configured it. I haven't. And then you have the user management. And here you can, of course, manage the users like every other machine. The storage manager. And it says I don't have access uh, to manage it. I haven't configured all these modules yet, but uh, maybe I will. It's quite handy. So, oh, yeah, this will be my build for now. And I will stick to this option, Hyper-V Server 2016 standalone. I do hope the guys with Xpenology get version 6 and above working on Hyper-V. That would be really cool. But for now, this will do, um, definitely. I will keep you guys informed if I have any news. If I want to try something else out, I also, and I found it interesting, I also will make a video for that. Um, as I said, there will be a video coming up where I upgrade my other bare metal build uh, running 5.2. We'll upgrade that to 6.1. Uh, it's fairly an easy process. Uh, but if you don't know how to do that, check back. There will be a video for it coming up. Um, yeah, I will leave it at this for now. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, please leave it in the comment section. If you want me to try some different things with Hyper-V or my Xpanology build whatsoever. Um, I will see if I can cover them for you. Uh, if you like this one, please give a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye.